Okay, so this is your first lesson on fractions, and uh, let's just get started. So this is a breakdown of your fraction unit. It's going to look like this. We're going to start with the equivalent fractions, then work on improper fractions and mixed numbers. That'll take you up to the first lesson. After that, we're going to convert fractions to, fractions to percentages, then we're going to simplify fractions, add and subtract them, and then multiply and divide them. So here we go. Equivalent fractions. So equivalent fractions just means that there are two different fractions, but they mean the exact same thing. And when you see the numbers written like this, it actually is this. Sometimes this program just doesn't allow that to happen. So an equivalent fraction is a fraction that is similar or e exactly same as one half, but it is an equivalent fraction, so it doesn't actually say one half. So for example, if I times both of these by two, then the answer would be 2 over 4. 2 over 4 is an equivalent fraction to 1 over 2 because it both represents 1 half. You can have 5 over 10 by multiplying each the 1 and the 2, or the 1 over 2 by 5, etc. So that is an equivalent fraction. Whatever you do to the denominator, you have to do to the numerator. So whatever you do to the denominator, which is the bottom, you have to do to the numerator, which is the top. So remember, numerator's on the top, denominator's on the bottom. So for the 1 over 5, I'm going to multiply them both by 2 again, because that's the quickest way for me to get an equivalent fraction. So I know that it's 2 over 10. So there is my equivalent fraction. Next is the 20 over 100. Again, I'm going to multiply it by 2, just to keep it simple. And I know I have 40 over 200. So these are all equivalent fractions. Should be pretty straightforward. You will have a, a sheet that you'll have to finish up in the package that you'll get. And uh, that will be take up, we, we will take that up as a class. Let's talk improper fractions now. So an improper fraction is when the numerator is larger than the denominator. If the numerator on top is bigger than the denominator on the bottom, then you're dealing with an improper fraction. What it means is there's 25 over 10. So there's 25 parts over 10. And I'm going to show you how to convert those in a second after we talk about mixed numbers. So mixed numbers is also a fraction, but you're dealing with holes now. So 2 and 1 half means there's two holes, and the fraction still is 1 half. So there's 4 holes in 3 over 6. So 4, 3 over 6. There's four holes in that one, and three, and two over eight. You know that there's three holes. And when I say holes, I mean whole numbers. Okay, now let's talk about converting these things. So what we've got is we've got 12 over 10, and we want to convert that into a mixed number. Now I'm going to talk you through it, and I'm going to show you the results. So the very first thing that we need to do is we need to figure out how many times 10 goes into 12. Well, we know that 10 goes into 12 only one time. Then what you do is you subtract those numbers. So let's take a look at this. I'm just going to get this out of here. How many times does 10 go into 12? It goes in once. So 1 times 10 equals 10. Then you subtract the number. So 12 is the number that you're going to subtract from the 10, and the leftover is going to be 2. So you have one whole number because 10 goes into 12 once. So you have one whole number, and then you subtract the numerator from the amount that it's went in. So in this situation, it's went in 10 times. So 12 subtract 10. There's 2 left over, which makes up your fraction. So it's 1 and 2 over 10. And we're going to go through a couple more here, just so you understand exactly how to do it. So f 15 over 10. How many times does 10 go into 15 without going over? Well, we know it only goes in once. So 1 becomes your whole number. Then how much is left over? Well, we know that 1 times 10 equals 10. So now we're going to subtract the numerator from this number. So 15 subtract 10 there's five left over. So that new number becomes the numerator and the denominator is going to stay the same. So 15 over 10 in an improper fraction becomes one and five over 10 for a mixed number. Let's take a look at 20 over six. So 20 over six, how many times does six go into 20 without going over? Well, six times one is six, six times two is 12, six times three is 18. My best bet is six times three. So I'm gonna work with that. 
So I know that 6 times 3 is 18, so I know that 3 is my whole number. Now what's left over? Well, 6 times 3 equals 18. 20 subtract 18, and I got the 20 because it's the, pr the, the numerator, so I put it there, subtract those numbers, and I have 2 left over. So that becomes my new numerator. And of course, the denominator stays the same. So 20 over 6 becomes 3 and 2 6 when changed from an improper fraction to a mixed number. Let's take a look at 32 over 15. Uh, it might be too small, but 32 over 15. How many times does 15 go into 32 without going over? Well, 15 times 1 is 15. 15 times 2 is 30. That's my best bet. So I know that my whole number is going to be a 2 because 15 times 2 is 30. So let's put that in here. 15 times 2 equals 30. Now I need to figure out what my numerator is going to be by taking the previous numerator, 32, and subtracting my result with 15 times 2. I know I have 2 left over. So I know that that numerator is now 2, and of course the denominator has to stay the same. So 2 and 2 fifteenths when I'm converting improper fractions to mixed numbers. There will be uh, sheets on this where you will be doing this yourself and if you need some help just relate back to this lesson and should be able to sort it out. Now we're going to convert the following mixed numbers into improper fra or in equivalent fractions. Sorry, improper fractions I should say. Just ignore that little typo. This should say improper. Okay. So we have 2 and 1 half, and we have 5 and 3 fifths. The way that we do this is the first thing you have to do is you have to multiply the whole number by the denominator. So 2 times 2 equals 4. Then what I need to do is I need to add the numerator. So 4 plus 1 equals 5. This new number that we've just done by multiplying the whole number and the denominator and adding the numerator, it becomes your numerator, and the denominator stays the same. So it goes multiply and then add. So the whole number multiplied by the denominator, 5 times 5, equals 25. Then I have to add the numerator. So 25 plus 3 equals 28. So my new improper fraction is 28 over, the denominator stays the same, over 5. Let's take a look and see if I did that. Yeah, 2 times 2 plus 1. So therefore, 2 and 1 half equals 5 over 2 with an improper fraction, and the 5 times 5 plus 3. So 5 times 5 is 25, 25 plus 3 is 28. So we know that 5 and 3 over 5 is equal to 28 over 5, and that isn't written very well. So, okay. So now we're going to take a look at these. We're going to go through them real quick. 3 times 6 is 18. 18 plus 4 equals 22. So your new improper fraction is 22 over, and the denominator stays the same, 6. So let's do this. 5 times 10 plus. So 5 times 10 equals 50. 50 plus 6 equals 56. Therefore, 56 over 10 is my new improper fraction. Let's try the 4 and 8, th 8 over 11. So 4 times 11 equals 44. 44 plus 8 put the plus sign there, equals 52. So my improper fraction is 52 over 11. All right, so that's it for lesson number one. You're going to report to your workbook, and you're going to complete equivalent fractions and converting improper fractions to mixed numbers and converting mixed numbers to improper fractions. If you have any questions, let me know at school. Thanks.